Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. I'm Corey Ashton here at Webtegrity. Excited to walk you through uh, the next few weeks. We're gonna be going through CSS for WordPress, all right? And really, these are CSS elements that work across the board. But I wanna show you inside the environment of WordPress how you can actually manipulate certain things. This week I wanna to talk to you about how you can use CSS to manipulate fonts. All right, so if you have a whole paragraph of text and you want to maybe change the font, uh, or maybe change the color, or change the spacing. There's all sorts of fun things you can do if you understand what CSS is. So if you missed our last video, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to explain what CSS even is. So if you're that much of a beginner, please take time, pause this video, click on that link down below, and go ahead and, and check out that video so you really understand what uh, cascading style sheets are, okay? Now, if you've done that, and, and you're just saying, all right, Corey, but now I don't know what, first of all, I don't know what's possible with changing those elements. And two, I don't know where to even go to change those things, right? So the truth is, let me shrink myself down here. Dun, 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 dun. I'm really tiny today. That's all right, because I really want you to focus on the screen, okay? Um, the truth is, if you want to come here and change, um, you know, how large, maybe the font size of, of this area here. How would you even know to do that? Some authors, uh, really, really kind theme authors, will give you a WYSIWYG environment where you can go into your dashboard area and maybe go to your themes area and do a customized type situation, right? Where, and I'm not sure if this theme allows me to do it, but let, let's go in here and see. Um, colors, let's see what this does for us. So if I were to go into this area here, it's trying to load the page for a second. Um, if, if I go into this area here and open it up, it's going to allow me to change the background color. Um, navigation, static front page, what else is it going to let me do? Uh, background image, well, some authors would be so kind, they would be amazing, as to let you have maybe a tab here that said fonts or typography, right? And in so doing, you could do a drop-down list that would allow you to change the, the size of the font. So maybe it's too small and you want it, maybe it's at a 24 and you want it at a 32, really big, chunky uh, font. You are able just to, in, in an environment like this, just change um, the, the numbers, if you will. Or let's say if you want, uh, when you hover over this, you want it to change to a blue instead of a red. Some authors will give you the ability to change those things in a, a WYSIWYG type environment like this. So what you see is what you get or a, a GUI interface like this. But if like this theme, my author does not allow me to do that, what are some workarounds? What are some ways that I can still get in there and make those changes happen on my website? That's really what I want to walk you through because what that means is then you're going to have to nerd out with me a little bit and go further into customizing your theme than an author ever wanted you to do. All right, if all that makes sense, here we go. I want to walk you through uh, wh what it would look like to change and, and I'm going to put the link down below in the description box of where you can get to the blog article that gives you all of this so you can literally just copy and paste the nerd code that I've written for you, okay? Um, I'm going to teach you today how to change your font color. I'm going to teach you how to change the font size. I'm going to teach you how to change the font family. What? All right. I'm going to teach you how to change uh, letter spacing so that if, if, it, if, it's, um, if the letters are really kind of too tight because you're using a fun font and it's kind of hard to, to read everything, I'm going to show you how you can kind of expand that without changing the size of the font. That's a cool trick. And maybe the line height to adjust the spacing between each line of your paragraphs. So this type of CSS, these elements work with your paragraph mode. So any of your like just normal text on a page, it works with uh, if you want to change your H1s, which is typically what this is, a H1 tag. It can work with your, your um, widget boxes over here on the right side or wherever your widget boxes are. If they have a title area that maybe you want to change the accent color of a, of a widget title box, how do you do that? Here it is. So if you've ever watched my tutorials before, you know that I highly praise the browser Firefox. That's what I use whenever I'm using development. So today I'm gonna talk about, or whenever I develop, today I'm gonna talk about um, their plugin, their add-on that they have inside of their, I'm gonna shrink myself way down because I really, really I could probably just totally disappear. I'm gonna disappear for a second. Um, uh, what I want you to do is is use Firefox because they have this add-on over here on the right side, if you can follow my cursor, um, called Firebug. 
And it's really super, super helpful if you want to figure out what element this is on the website and how how can you go in and change it. Because first of all, I don't know if this is an H1. I don't know if this is um, an H2. I don't know if this is just something that I wrote in there myself on the actual blog post, right? How do I get to that area? So go ahead and do uh, flip over to Firefox as your browser. If you haven't done the add-on for Firebug, I'll put that in the description box below as well to walk you through how to do that. You're going to just turn it on. You're going to engage it. You're going to click the uh, little uh, tr uh, element selector over here, and you're just going to hover over whatever font area you want to manipulate. And I'm going to drag this on the screen. Please don't freak out. I know this is a lot of nerd code, but I'm going to show you really quickly uh, what you're looking for. So right away, I selected uh, the, the big title area that says CSS, how does it work in WordPress? You see that right here? And right away, I know it's the H1. Great, so it's all my H1s. So when I come up here on the right side, you're going to see all the different style sheet elements, all these CSS elements that affect, and they're in a hierarchical ranking of how they affect that spot on my page. So if I were to manipulate anything, you can check it out and see, see the change happen on the spot here. So right away, it says that my entry title color is 4444, 4, 4, which is actually this really nice dark gray color. Um, if I wanted to do a test really quickly, just to change the color of that font, I could back that out and type in a different six-digit uh, color code. Or the reason why it was four digits right, or three digits right there, is because that would actually repeat as four, 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 four. And when they repeat like that, um, style sheets are so smart it knows that you can only put it in there three times. So if I wanted that to be red, let's say uh, right away, it could go CC one, two, three, four. And uh, go ahead and put that in. Um, and it's showing me that that's red. That's great. Did it change? No, it did not change. Um, so, so why didn't it? That's because that's actually a link right now. So it's, it's being affected by my entry title A link. See this A? That means it's a link, uh, an active link. So if I were to change that area now, this is how you do troubleshooting on this. Notice that as soon as I type that in there and I found the right, the right element to affect, it immediately took it to red. Now what I'm playing with here is just this kind of selector tool just to do a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, so you can just kind of see it and know, all right, this is the element now I need to go affect in my style sheet. So I can copy that onto my clipboard. I'm just going to click on that entry dash title a, and you need that period in front of it because that means it's a div tag. Um, entry dash title A. I'm going to copy that onto my clipboard. And if I really wanted to make that change happen inside of my website permanently, because right now I'm just testing it, if I wanted to make that happen permanently, I would have to go into an area in my dashboard and go to a theme options area where an author hopefully has done this for you at least. If he doesn't give you that environment to easily change things, maybe he's given you something like this called a custom CSS box. This is a spot where you can go in and basically play around with overriding his existing or her existing uh, theme elements, right? So if I wanted to, I can just enter down, drop in that that I had pasted. I'm going to open the element with the curly bracket, close the element with a curly bracket, and then I'm going to go ahead and just type in the new color code that I want in there. Color. You have to have the pound sign, CC1234, and put that little uh, semicolon behind it there. And now if I save my options, now when I go to the front side of my website and click refresh, I'm going to click refresh and the page just reloaded and now it is red permanently. It, it's red. So that's great. Now we know how to affect color. Really? This video is, is going to be way too long if I show you how to do every single one of these things. But what I want to teach you is how to use that firebug tool to find which element you need to go into and change. And then that's how you do it. it it's that that simple. I'm going to take you to another quick website uh, and show you um, the line spacing issue that I'm struggling with on this particular website. So if I go, uh, let's go to a page up here. Let's go to, I think it was activities maybe has a spot on there. Yeah. So they wanted to use this really fun um, kind of really whimsical font on their website, right? All right. 
problem is it's very difficult to read and they're, they're very adamant to stay with this because it's their brand. They want to use that font. So one of the elements I want to teach you about today is, line, um, is called letter spacing. And you can add a little bit of padding or spacing between letters that allows your eyes to focus a little bit more clearly when you're using a font like this. So again, I'm going to grab my Firebug element um, tool click on that and I'm going to click on that area so I know which spot in my CSS it's affecting uh, that particular and I'm going to slide this over it's kind of hard to see on such a small screen but let me see if I can show you exactly what I'm wanting to do here I'm going to go to the P which is paragraph right anything in a paragraph mode should should be affected uh, like this so I'm going to say letter spacing and I'm just going to say even two pixels look at that Look, look when I come back over here now, how much clearer and easier that is to read. Isn't that fantastic? But if you don't know that those options are even available, you don't even know how to type them in, right? Again, using Firebug, this is just something where I'm just basically doing a quick test to see if I'm affecting the right thing. Now I know I need to go into their style sheet, go into um, the paragraph area, and add in letter spacing to pixels, right? And that'll affect everything in my paragraph mode across the entire website, not just on this page, but every single part of my website that has um, the paragraph mode in it. So it affected this stuff down here, all of this stuff, all that looks so much better now, much easier to read in, in its spacing of, of lettering. Really, really great option there. Uh, I'm going to list down, again, I'm going to list down how to change your font family, your line height, uh, your font size. I'm going to list how to do all those different things, and I'm going to give you other resources as well that will help you and save time. Remember, 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 you have to have uh, a custom CSS box area if you're not using a child theme. This is the area you need to go into to add all these elements because if you ever were to update your website later on, you could lose all this functionality. If your author has not given you a custom CSS box area, I want you to go check out a plugin. I'm going to put the link down below. You can get a plugin. Let's see if I can show you. Um, let's see if I can show you. It's called Custom CSS. That's all it is. And you can hold on, wait for it. I'm going to log into my website really quickly so I can show you. Um, exactly what that looks like. Once you actually activate a plugin for custom CSS, it'll be in your appearance area, custom CSS, and now it's just a simple plugin that basically gives you an area where you can add it yourself if the author was not kind enough to do that for you. Super, super, super important that you do this and super important that you get this. If you have any questions at all, will you please consider leaving a reply in, in the feed here on YouTube? Or shoot us a, a tweet over on Twitter. I'll put the link uh, in our Twitter, Twitter handle below so that you can connect with us that way. If this is too much, if it's too fast, or if you're going, Corey, I have other questions, will you consider giving us that question so we can write, uh, actually do a video for you and write a blog article for you? We'll see you next time, WordPress Wednesday. Check us out online. I'll put everything in the description box below. Bye, y'all. All right, just for the fun of it, I'm going to go ahead and show you all some of my outtakes. Highly embarrassing. Hope this makes your day better. All right, there you go. This is real. It's all sorry. Just sorry in advance. So if you're looking to do some WordPress, when, so if, oh man, that's a tongue twister. So if you're looking to do more with your WordPress CSS, um, I'm going to puke. Bummer. Hold on. Let's retake. You want to realize though that that affects like every single, like that affects every single spot on your. I think I totally just lost my train. Of, it, it, I t lost my train of thought. Um, so it affects every single spot. Man, y'all say that I'm good at this stuff. I'm horrible at this stuff. All right, pause. Well, poop. I meant to already have that logged in. I think I went to the wrong screen. Um, hold on. Let's see if I can get logged in. Pause. Sweet tea! Well, why didn't that work? Uh-oh, that didn't work, did it? Um, oh, there you go, wrong bracket. Look at that, you guys. That's how you have to be very meticulous in writing your nerd code. So, see, even I who do this, I do this all day long, you forget and I put the wrong, see, I put an in bracket there instead of an open bracket. Hmm. Well, trickery stuff, trickery, trickery. That could have been a headache for a while.